this way. Hi everyone, welcome to Fresh from the Studio. We'll get started in just about a minute or two. Hi everyone and welcome to Fresh from the Studio. Um, this is our Women in Their Works program where we invite our member artists to share what they're working on now with you. Um, we are very happy to welcome three of our artists, um, Veronique Kahn, Elaine McMurray, and Falana Oliphant to discuss their projects and um, process with you today. Each artist is gonna have 10 minutes to present. At the end of their presentations, um, we'll open it up to questions and comments. If anything comes to mind during their presentations, feel free to put your question in the chat and we'll address them at the end. Um, today, we're gonna start with Falana and I'll stop my share. Hi, um, I'm Falana Oliphant. Um, I live in East Texas near Tyler, which is about 90 miles east of Dallas. Um, I've lived here over 30 years. And I share a studio with my husband and three dogs. Um, I'm very grateful to be invited. Uh, thank you very much. And um, well, I hope you enjoy it. I've got a video for you today. Um, so if this is the time to start it, I will. Hello, I am Falana Oliphant, and this is my studio. Welcome, and please come in and see what I've been up to the last year or two or five. Um, I've been working on environmental series. This big black drawing is an ongoing drawing that I started, I guess, uh, almost three years ago. And sometimes I work really hard and long on it, and sometimes it's one bird a day um, and it's I've got a long ways to go so I'm going to just draw this whole piece of paper out I think I've got about seven more feet um, it's just you know a sad reflection of all the species that we're losing birds other animals plants people um, so it's sort of a documentation about that and I like that it's a long-term 
uh, drawing that, I don't know, it's sort of like a meditation. Makes me feel a little bit better. Maybe bring some insight to the problem that we have about our plan. I had for probably 30 years had uh, bird drawings going, bird journal is what I call it. Um, the kind of iconic bird shape uh, that I've done many different things with. Um, so this series um, about the environment is more about their delicate, innate things that uh, animals know and the things that they learn. So some of these have to do with homing, uh, searching, and what they end up with when they get there. Uh, and people are the same way. Uh, these are not only about birds. Uh, in the end, it's really, really, it's about all of us. Um, I mean, the planet. One of the things that I also enjoy is um, doing this slow work this really slow, um, detailed work. It's just made up and then coming back over it with a really harsh, fast mark. Um, which I think, I don't know, it took me a long time to get to the point where I would do something like that, but I think it's very important on these that they're not just pretty, um, sentimental drawings about the loss that we have, but it's more of a reflection of what we did have and what we're doing and what we can do in the future uh, to undo some of it. This one is, this one is called Homing. This one is titled, uh, I was thinking about that one. This one is titled Delete. I had, I had made this bird to be something, a different type of drawing, but I couldn't stand it. And I had to put all this energy in. Um, and I think it's a much better drawing for it. I think it would have been too, too sweet otherwise. But we are deleting a lot of a lot of our planet, not all intentionally, but carelessly or just unknowingly. And um, I do think we still can keep keep more, keep a lot more for the future for for other people and animals. If we'll just get really careful and work quickly. This drawing is really, I don't know, it's one of my favorites right now, uh, maybe because of the bird shape. It's called Adjust to Reality. Um, again, I, I knew the kind of mark making I wanted to make in the end. And so the bird, of course, had to come first. Um, so I was super excited to get the bird drawn. And I really, really love that little guy. Um, and I was really, really, <laughs> excited about the mark making um, on top of that. So those are again, pretty brutal, fast, loud, loud, loud marks in contrast to the slow, delicate work um, in the bird. Um, I was in a framing mode right when Diane had called, so that's why these are framed and this one's not. Um, <clears throat> Um, but it will be soon. So this drawing has led me to this drawing. Um, <clears throat> I had some big ideas about it, and I'm still a little confused uh, as to what I'm going to do. It was going to be more of a mixed media. Um, I'm in the thought process of introducing um, a female figure. I haven't used a human figure in drawing in about 30 years or more. So I'm excited about that, but I'm not real sure about how I'm going to do it. Um, but it is coming. I'm working on that. So this composition is a little tough because of the intro of that bird, but um, I don't know. We'll see what happens in the next month or so. 
And that, that drawing is on Arches 88, which is very, very unforgiving. This drawing is on Duralar, which is fabulous. It's uh, very different. I don't know if you can see that it's translucent, but uh, it's very slick. And so it really takes line. Uh, it's like being an ice skater on paper, if I could be an ice skater. It's just fabulous. Um, so this has been fun to get back to. And the reason uh, I started drawing on this again is partly because I really do enjoy it, but also I'm moving back into some sculpture, and this will be part of that. Uh, the one of the things I was thinking about on this drawing was um, I had been watching some plastic uh, that was caught on a barbed uh, wire fence that I passed for a month and it changed over time. And it was beautiful, billowy, and then it got real stringy and straggly at the end. And so I imagine there'll be several of those types of drawings that'll be layered. And so I want to just show you sort of an example, really of the paper cutting I enjoy doing and um, these compositions. This one's from this year. This one's a couple years old. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the sculpture of this new drawing will be incorporated into three-dimensional form. Um, and probably some more paper cutting because I do enjoy that. It's a lot like the drawing. Uh, of these new drawings that I did. They're, it's slow, it's delicate, uh, but hopefully it also reflects a lot of strength. I do like I really love the metal and the paper together. So I'm bringing that in some more. It's been a little while since I've done that. There's just not enough time to do everything. Uh, sadly, we have to eat and sleep and all that. Uh, so this is all new. Uh, it's just stuff, but it is an example of kind of how my mind works. So all those, all those little circles that I've punched out, this is the remnants of that. And I will use that in a sculpture. Um, these are just pieces that'll move around. Who knows how they'll end up in a few months, what all of this will look like. But I am moving into sculpture. And uh, I, do, I do work on many things at a time. So I'm not gonna just stop drawing or stop making sculpture. It won't be like that. But uh, sometimes one gets a little heavier than the other. I am going to introduce the the female figure, and I am going to uh, do some more porcelain work to incorporate in the sculpture. Um, <laughs> so that'll take me through to next year. I hope you've enjoyed the visit. Um, I really appreciate you being here and the invitation from women and their work. Um, I wish you all the best, and if you're ever in Tyler, I hope you'll look me up. Um, <laughs> that's it. My uh, cameraman was so excited when it was just 10 minutes exactly that he turned everything off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thank you. trying to get out of this for you. Cool. Thanks so much, Falana. Um, next, we have Elaine McMurray. Hi, so let me get my screen shared real fast. Um, All righty, can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna start my timer too. <laughs> um, so yeah, hi, my name is Elaine McMurray. Uh, I recently graduated from UT Austin. 
and I got my BFA. My practice primarily lies in painting. It's what I love to do. But recently, I've also kind of taken a departure into doing some more sculptural things and trying to combine those with painting in a way that makes my current work a little bit more dynamic. Uh, generally speaking, I like to start making work, you know, from my emotions. It's That's where a lot of it, the inspiration, I guess, comes from. And then from there, you know, the reason why I love to paint is because I use it as a means of just emotionally processing stuff. And generally speaking, my subject matter kind of revolves around exploring, you know, my own sexuality and just other intimate moments of my life, you know, trying to grow as a person and kind of discovering who I am uh, as a young person. And really briefly, before I get into some of my work, I'm going to touch on some artists that I admire. Maybe. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so on the left here, we have Nicole Eisman, and I really love the depiction of form here. I think it's really dynamic, especially in relation to some of the other things going on in the painting. Uh, I also really enjoy the way the movement is captured in the curtain. Uh, and then on the right, we have uh, Dana Lana Harper, and I just really love how sculptural this is and how the little jewels and stuff interact with the light. That's something I'm going to try and carry on in some of my newer work. And then on this slide on the left, we have Elizabeth Murray, and then we also have Gina Beavers. And I really admire both of their work because they're both very sculptural painters. And I think the work has a lot of dimension and is very dynamic. And that's something I'm also trying to experiment with now in my own practice. Uh, so this is now we're going to be jumping into some of my own work. Uh, so, excuse me. Uh, and this painting uh, is kind of the start for me, is where I like to kind of do a lot of layering. Uh, the reason why I like to do this is because I think it communicates movement and time really, really well. Uh, another thing I like to do in a lot of my work is I use a lot of bright colors. And I really like doing this not only just because like I'm a color person and really, really like using a lot of, you know, rainbow bright type of colors, but I also think it adds some depth to the work. Because, you know, in a lot of my earlier stuff, the subject matter kind of revolves around sexuality and figuring out who you are in terms of all that. And just kind of exploring, you know, the female sex life, as it were. And I feel like discussing that in a more open way can, you know, kind of be viewed in one way or the other. But I like to do it in a way that's subtle, yet in your face. And I feel like it just adds depth in that sense. Um, and then another thing I like to do in a lot of my work is I like using a lot of alternate materials such as glitter, uh, crystal, crushed up paper, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, and one of the reason I really like to use glitter is because I think it really adds a lot of movement to the work and your eye can kind of dart across the canvas in a nice way. Uh, and that's a detail of that. Uh, and in this work, we do have a lot more layering going on too. This is actually a bigger piece as well. And this is the finished product. So generally speaking, I do like to start with a lot of really bright colors and then it eventually leads up to this. And then I think the layering also speaks to, you know, how we as people are very complex and require a lot of examination because we have a lot of layers. And we as people are incredibly complex and beautiful. And I think that's something that's also conveyed in some of my work. Um, and then in this piece, in terms of speaking about, you know, using alternate materials, I actually use them as a jumping off point for the start of this piece. And so this is like a better detail shot. I don't know if you can see it, but there's these small cutouts of paper right here. And then in the top left-hand corner, so those pieces are actually, I cut up a previous project that I made about myself and my ex and use that as the jumping off point for this piece. And it kind of reflects, you know, the discomfort there is and self-discovery and how it can even be a little bit lonely. Um, yeah, that's a detail of that. And then in this one too, I'm going to move that down there. But yeah, in this top left-hand corner in terms of using, you know, these remnants and mementos of, you know, 
previous relationships. Uh, this actually at one point was a pelican, a little glass pelican that I, I had gifted to my ex, but I got it back when we broke up. And I didn't really know what to do with all of these objects. So I ended up crushing it up and using it as material for this painting. Uh, and it was fairly therapeutic. There we go. Uh, and so this is kind of, you know, jumping off of relationships and whatnot. This is actually, I painted this after one of my first dates that I went on with a woman. And, you know, I had heard things all the time, like about how, you know, on your first date, like it would be really intense and you would have this deep conversation about your coming out experiences, but you had just met and it would be life changing. And I thought it wasn't going to be a real thing. But then I went on this date and I was like, oh, the rumors are true. <laughs> oh, but anyway, we started out in a Panera and then we ended up going to her car because it got cold out. And we, you know unearthed some of our coming out stories uh, and that's I feel like kind of communicates in the layering a little bit because I really wanted to create like a blur of time you know a blurred moment but also one that really kind of struck out so that was a lot of stuff I did in undergrad and this is a bunch of we're moving into stuff that I'm doing postgrad um so the picture on the left here my left is actually of a window in a bathroom that I just thought looked gorgeous one morning because I really love the way that the light interacts with the curtain and how all those layers again kind of just come together and create like a really complex image and that's something I'm trying to do with some of my more current work and then on the right is a more sculptural experiment that I did with some canvas that I think led to some good thoughts um so this piece right here actually um let me move that okay uh, I wanted to focus on color blocking and creating something that was a little bit more sterile and communicated, you know, deeper emotion. But that being said, I also wanted to work on obscuring the image and experimenting with that because I wanted people to really have to sit with it and kind of be confused and uncomfortable to figure it out because I'm often you know when I start my paintings it's from a place of confusion and discomfort so I'm really trying to you know channel that when I make things oh there we go and this is kind of leading into some of my newer stuff and it's getting you know more experimental here and I actually did this painting on a shower curtain. It's a depiction, a more abstract depiction of me in the shower on the shower curtain. And originally I wanted to hang it in the middle of the room so that the light could pass through it at different angles. And like you would be able to see people on the other side of the curtain and it would become like a more interactive experience. Um, and that's something I also am trying to do with current experimental work. And so, yeah, this is kind of just a detail shot real fast of some of the insulation foam and something that I'm really working on now is like using metallic paints and materials. Because I think the way that the light transforms the work when it hits that metallic is just so beautiful um, and really adds a lot of complexity. So on the my left here, this painting is actually, it's oil paint on top of metallic spray paint. And what I just love doing about this and what I'm gonna try and do more is the fact that when you tilt it certain ways, it like reveals certain parts of the piece and makes others go away. And, you know, it's kind of like in life, everyone has their own unique perspective on things and like certain parts about you might come to light in other certain situations. And it's all just a unique and beautiful part of the human experience, you know, changing and growing. And that's kind of what this I feel reflects and what I'm super excited about doing. Um, and then here on the right, really fast, um, is kind of like a more experimental thing that I'm also working on uh, that's inspired by my mom's wedding dress. She recently gave it to me to use for artistic purposes. And so these two mini pieces on the left, it's the piping is kind of inspired by the lace. And eventually I want to like build kind of like a cage or something as it were, like around the piece. So that way the light and the shadow can interact with it and change as necessary. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, what I'm doing 
uh, thank you guys for having me. Thanks so much, Elaine. And next up, we have Barony Khan. Yes, hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, do I hi, everybody. Um, I'm Barony Khan, and I would like to thank Women and Their Work for inviting me to share with you about my art. That's really a wonderful opportunity. I will start a little bit about my concept of work. Of course, I cannot talk too long about my work. It's so, it's, it has a lot, but I will try to keep it short. I grew up in Morocco, Switzerland, the USA and the Netherlands where I studied art. I like to work cross-culturally, multiculturally, intercultural. I believe that as a child, the first impression that you have when you wake up, the culture, the forms, the architecture, the landscape, the nature, everything does make a lot of importance. It's important how you express yourself in art at a later point. You have preferences for certain col colors, preferences for certain forms and shapes. And, and I think it comes from that. Um, in Morocco, decorative art plays a role. Of course, it's much more in-depth than just decorative art. It has more than just to be a meaning of beauty. It is really culturally based as well. In Switzerland and in Holland, you have that last, the, the decorative art is less ornamental art, is less of importance, it's there but it's different than those countries more in Northern Africa or in the Southern of Europe. Think, for example, when you see North and think North, I'm thinking of Bauhaus. And when I'm thinking of more the Southern, the Southern cultures, I'm thinking for an example, Alhambra in Granada, the palace, where you have the writings and ornaments on the walls, the Court of the Lions, it's very impressive. The Northern I have thought when I'm coming back to Bauhaus is more focusing on the simplicity and directness of the design itself. And it has a wonderful elegance to it. It contributes also to the beauty, I think. I wanna show you something. I used in my paintings, the writing sometimes. As I mentioned in Alhambra, the writings are on the walls as well. I work with floral and geometrical forms. Here you have a painting where you have the floral forms and the geometrical forms together. Floral forms and geometrical forms have a certain meaning symbolism to me. Here I have another painting where I did put the writing on it. Of, you see the floral, I try like with the Bauhaus influences and Northern influence to simplify the forms and just to let them be. You have the squares and the floral forms as well. Here you have a painting where the, where the, the geometrical forms dissolve a little bit. You have the light and darkness in there and the lines. The lines are for me, the symbol of just rediscovering art over and over again as you create. And here you have another painting. It is the same, light and dark and abstract. It is, it is really, really interesting how the texture also plays a role when you, when you add it to the, to the, to the painting. I like floral forms as well. Uh, I love florist forms. And I have here a painting of geometry of, of, of orchids. And I like to simplify the forms, but have the repetitiveness and try to put the ornamental form in there as well. Here I have some drawings where I try that too. And here as well, another drawing, if you see it. 
Animals have always played a role in my, in my art. And um, I, I want to show you some pictures of some animals. Here you have a bird. Here you have a squirrel. Everybody knows squirrels. Here you have birds as well. And here you have a ceramic sculpture of a bird. I, a little bit expressionistic with, again, the ornaments play a little bit of a role here, floral ornaments. What is, and what is very important too is um, the, the rose. The rose is for me a, a, a symbol of expressing thoughts and feelings. But very important to me is the latest work, or latest, it was for a, a couple of years ago. It's called Reink Reaction, Reacciones en Tinta, from Rebecca Bauman, a poet, and from my drawings from Veronique Hall. It is Rebecca's reactions to my drawings that plays a role in the, in the book. I'm gonna show you some drawings. For example, this one, it's again, the ornamental form, the influences of decorative art in a different in-depth meaning, which is very surrealistic and expressionist as well. Here you have another, another drawing as well. The geometrical forms start playing a role in there too. I have other drawings that I, uh, here you have a, again, another drawing. And I have, I have here several drawings. Here you have more drawings with like two women, two women. And then you have again, the North South influences trying to, to convey the directness and at the same time, the decorative art in a much more deeper meaning and beautiful meaning that there is with geometrical form and ornaments. Here again, you have two women. You have here a face, it looks like a face. It's very expressive. Again, here you have a dialogue, like two people talking almost to each other. Here you have a more, more um, decorative, but more in-depth meaning. A lot, I work with a lot of symbolism, a lot of symbolism. Here you have another, another um, drawing. And you have here another drawing. And this is almost abstract expressionistic. Those are the forms become, become very expressive, very, very expressive. And here too, with those drawings. It's, uh, it's those are drawings that are very important to me. But I do also other drawings. If I go back to it, I have here drawings that I've made where I put more or less the influences of decorative art and ornaments into more drawing and, and mix. Here you have a bird, a tree. You have here another bird. And if I simplify the expression, it's not the right thing to say it that way. If I try to make it more direct or more to the essence, sometimes I just keep it very simple, very, I don't know how to express this. I don't know if the word simple is right, but it's just very direct. I also do, um, uh, exp uh, if you go back to the square as a, as a meaning, as a form, you have here a more expressionist work. It could be looked as like a tile, a tile. And then I have here some, some ceramic works that I've worked on. Those are flowers. Here you have some flowers too. 
And here you have some flowers. And here you have like geometrical forms. You see this here, but they are like abstract flowers as well. So this is basically what I'm doing. I try to, to work with influences of cultures from the South and cultures of the North in Europe and then in Northern Africa and Southern Europe and combine them in my own interpretation in my own way of looking at it. And this is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now we'll open it up to questions and comments for all the artists. Yes, there were some questions that were in the chat. Um, I'll start from the beginning. Um, there was a great question uh, from Elaine to Falana. Um, she says, I really admire your emotion that you put in your drawings. I also really love your sculptures and how they interact with light and shadow. How do you see your drawing practice combining with your sculpture? Oh, well, I've made a lot of sculpture that combines drawing. Uh, and I love them together. Um, I, when I was in school, when I got my BFA, I couldn't decide between sculpture and drawing. Um, and I do a little bit of printmaking too, but I couldn't decide. And way back then, uh, you kind of had to, but I didn't. So I finally, years ago, started to marry those. And um, I don't know, I wish I could hold something up and show it to you, but I do have a website if you're interested in looking there. Um, there's a lot of that on there, but I do think I found a good way to combine them. You know, they're strong. I feel like they have to be the same. The sculpture can't overpower the drawing and the drawing can't get lost on the form. I agree. I love that answered my question perfectly. I really do admire your sculpture and your drawing. And I think the way that they are able to intertwine is really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, and now, Elaine, there's a question for you from Luna. Um, she said, I was curious about how you know what to reveal and what to conceal when making paintings pertaining to your emotions or personal experiences. How much do you want the audience to know about you? Hi, yeah, no, that is a really good question. Um, honestly, I mean, when I'm like in process, it's very, you know, an intense, experience or it can be because that's how I you know manage you know my own emotional state of being is through painting so in process it is very intense and emotional and I'm just making whatever I want you know to be quite honest I'm just kind of going for whatever but then like once you know we start reaching the end if there is a detail in the painting that I think might reveal a little more than I'm willing to share at that moment then I kind of well you know do some layering and make it a little bit more complex if it's not something that I super am wanting to talk about. But generally speaking, I'm a fairly open book. I feel like on that front, you know, just given some of the work I showed today, you know, could be considered, you know, incredibly personal, especially the first one. Um, but yeah, no, generally speaking, I'm really open to sharing, especially, you know, about, you know, intimate relationship, romantical details because I feel like it's not something that's not often talked about you know women who are attracted to other women it's not like we there's a ton of representation out there so that is tr why I try and be more open about that in particular great that was a great question and also a great answer um and I'd also like uh, to field a question to uh, Veronique um, about sort of the symbols that you are drawn to 
uh, flowers and lightness and darkness. And I was hoping you could speak more about uh, their personal importance to you, especially also the squirrels and the animals, which I really enjoyed seeing. Well, the squirrels and the animals I just love because I have a lot of squirrels outside my house, hopping around, <laughs> just like that. But each animal has a certain meaning or can have a certain meaning. For me, the bird, bird pertains to liberty. And the squirrels pretend to liberty as well because they can roam around for free, uh, roam around free, sorry, and just play around the playfulness that you have. It's, uh, there's a lot of symbols that I can also connect to it, um, but mostly when I see them, I'm thinking of liberty, of the able to, to, to run around, fly, and just be. The flowers, like the rose, symbolizes for me the emotions of thoughts and feelings. It's not just the rose given on Valentine's Day. Roses, roses emerge, the petals emerge one for one, and they are very frail, very, very frail. So I think you have to take good care of them as well. Um, it's it's very it's very important. The orchid is about the frailty of life itself, but I leave it up to the viewer itself themselves to to see what they see in there. They don't necessarily have to see the same thing that I see. Nice, very. I agree with the squirrels, and I see them a lot outside too. They seem like they're very free. Um, yeah, that was great to see all of y'all's different inspirations and how they are sort of seen in the way you're making marks and um, the way that all three of y'all's art kind of interact with each other. Um, is there any other questions from our participants? Um, can feel free to drop it in the chat. And there is also the artist's websites as well as their artist registry page in the chat. And I'm going to put the Instagram here. And I'd also like to give some time for any of our members to let us know about upcoming shows or any events that they might be participating in or have coming up. Um, I wanted to say to Elaine, is it Elaine or Elena? I'm sorry. Oh, it's Elaine. You had it right. Okay. One of the things that I thought was really cool about your paintings was the glitter. Um, in the crushed up uh, ceramic, because when I first, when I saw the first one, it reminded, it made me think of uh, scabs and scarring and, you know, uh, the beauty and healing. And then the more you spoke about it, the more that made sense. So.